What's up, guys? This is Steve here. And Luca. And today we're finally doing the Okada Nana documentary that I was talking about Ooh. for the past week. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it isn't like um gonna happen like what happened with the Comey documentary. Mm. Because it's, it's still mm. it's still pretty fresh in our minds because we only saw it about a week ago. So yeah, it's it's more fresh in Ruka's mind because she watched some parts, but I have not watched it <laughs> in a week. So I hope I can actually remember some more things. You have notes on it, I mean, so I, that I, that will help. I mean, I had notes on Comey's too, but <laughs> that didn't really help. <laughs> Hopefully, I made better notes for Not John's documentary. Mm. Then. So, uh, do you want me to start it off somewhat, <laughs> or do you want to just mainly do this review and I'll do a commentary? Because uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to screw up. <laughs> that's why. Oh, it's all right. I'll 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 start it for you if that's how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> Please, so the documentary starts off uh, similar to Comey showing. We see uh, the concert where it was announced she was actually, getting her documentary. Actually, Ruka. Hmm? It, it starts off with Nai Chan So Thank You speech. Well, I Just mean, the they. Beginning. I know that they show that later, but like it <laughs> actually. You know what I mean. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ruka. I'm sorry. But, like, the start of them documenting was uh, during that concert. I forget which concert that was that they announced it. No idea. <laughs> uh, and then we actually get some footage of uh, Nana in her home. Mm -hmm. uh, we see we see her sister, which, you know, everyone knows, Rina, Okada I, Rina, I, her I, little I sister. Love she... <laughs> Oh, uh, we see so, her mom. This is the first time I ever saw her mom. Her same. mom is really pretty. And her family basically has this entire collection of Okada Nana merchandise. It, it's really Which nice I thought was see. so sweet. <laughs> it is really nice to see it's, that. It's like a whole table of pictures, photo cards, fans, the, the Sosenkyo posters from mm. previous years that she did. And I'm like, that's so sweet. I think her mom bought all of those. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, she said that it became, she made it a hobby of hers to go out and buy merchandise of her daughter. That's so really nice. <laughs> like, I wasn't expecting that her mom would be such a big, uh, oh, she. <laughs> Although, then again, it makes I mean, sense yeah, that, makes you sense, know, her mom but... would want to support her daughter. Yeah. Like, that was the, if I can bring this up a little comparison, that was the same with Akimoto Sayaka's family, too. Specifically in the Philippines. In uh, in her home, in her family's home in the Philippines, they have posters of Sayaka all around the house. Even in her own, her old room that she used to stay in as a child when she visited her family in the Philippines. Really? But that kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, yeah. But I just wasn't expecting, like, her mom to be, like, such a big thing. Cause, like, I, I would obviously expect, you know, her mom to support her, but I just wasn't expecting it to that <laughs> extent. To she wants to support her daughter in every way she can. Also, another thing that I thought was so sweet was we let her go in her room, mm -hmm. and she has this entire uh, collection of pictures mm -hmm. of her with other members yeah it was really nice that to was, see that was really cute yeah <laughs> um but yeah speaking of rena i really although this somewhat is kind of <laughs> off topic i really appreciated when nachan and rena cosplayed as rem and ram <laughs> <laughs> that was great <laughs> uh because uh Rena was a uh, rem, and as we all know. Uh, as also, you can see, another thing, as you can see, one here, thing that I thought was interesting, like I, I knew that uh, Nana had a sister, but I didn't know she had brothers. Yeah, I did not know that she had an older brother. I I just knew that she had her one. Two brothers. older brothers. She has two older brothers. I thought she only had one. 
Well, they oh, had better. one. There was one uh, that comes up later, but we do get a message from one of her brothers. But she has another older brother, too. Oh, I must not have felt that. <laughs> okay, so then after we uh, see her house, we go to the middle school yeah, that, that, was actually that she really used to go to. Mm-hmm. And, like, she used to be part of the arts club, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> we we, we kind of giggled at, like, where she was talking about how during the arts club, there was this one room that she would always go to, <laughs> look out the window, and think really deeply about stuff like... Life. She would think about what's the meaning of life. And this is in middle school. This is... <laughs> this is in middle school, and she's Why having she may these not deep thoughts. <laughs> I mean that that's you can tell Nachan is a majime just from that. that. I don't know if you'd call that majime. I just consider that really deep. <laughs> that's deep for a girl her age in middle school to think about. Yeah, I mean even I wasn't thinking about that in middle school. Hmm. But it was Let's just see. so interesting that um and then uh, before we actually learn that Nachan is actually um like really really close to her well one of her older brothers, mm -hmm. and it and it's really and it was really nice to see that too like how much uh, her older brother has been there for Nachan specifically, mm -hmm. and how um I'm not sure if it was later in the documentary or close to this time how. Nachan was making a comparison, or wait, was it Nachan or was it Nachan's mother that was making a comparison between her and her sister of how, uh, how opposites they were to each other? That was her sister. That okay. was her sister making the comparison. Okay, that was her sister. <laughs> yeah. But it was just so interesting how you're seeing like younger, like elementary school Nachan and seeing how she's all shy <laughs> and everything, mm -hmm. and then we get uh, Rina. How outgoing she was. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And yeah, Nana was really shy and introverted when she was little. And then in middle school, when she came to find out about AKB, that was how she started making friends because it was something that everyone was talking about. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I would just say, like, the first half, or like maybe the first quarter that documentary is mostly um uplifting i would have to say and i mean yeah, like it's, it's more happy because it's then, very sweet because then the documentary sort of gets <laughs> it, very it turns heavy, really sad very heavy I, and depressing so <laughs> i didn't expect it to be so sad hmm. but then we see nachan going through her akb auditions mm -hmm. And I, I uh, for the auditions, I'm not, I don't really know the song. Like, did you know the song that what she did for the auditions or, or was the it, song she auditioned with? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess that doesn't really matter because it was only just like a one or two minute thing. But then we got the, to see her and her gen mates. Together and her gen mates were giving uh, commentary on Nachan herself mm -hmm. and how uh, they said how serious she was and mm. how how she set the standard and bar for everyone else because of how hard of a worker she was. She really was. She, you know, even she said it. She was always giving it her all whenever she was not even just performing but while rehearsing she was giving it her haul hmm. she was given the 120 percent uh-huh like it even worried some of the members like oh i feel like she's working too hard she never slacks off i think it more or less worried her senpai especially uh, yuri as we come to know as not john's well best friend slash best friend girlfriend slash wife <laughs> <laughs> no, Those so. two. You gotta love the Yuna. <laughs> yeah, like uh, Like that that was also a thing that was brought up too. Mm. 
Like, like I, that was something yeah. that was brought up to like Nana talking about how she has more interest towards girls than she does yeah with boys. Yeah, the one day that they were all together in a group and how all the other girls were talking about uh boys, but she didn't care about it. That's and then when, when she... they started talking about girls. Yeah, that's when she realized uh yeah, I think I like girls a lot more than boys. <laughs> Well, I mean, she did. She came out as bisexual. Hmm. So she likes both genders. She just happens to like girls just a little bit more. I mean, uh, uh, she was like one of the very first members to ever do that, right? Or was she actually the first member to actually like come out on that? Well, I don't know about that. But I know of one other member who came out as bisexual, was that and Momoka? that's no, not Momoka. I I'm not sure what Momoka's <laughs> deal was. I'm not sure which way she was. <laughs> but no, it was. Uh, I believe it was Takita Kayako. Fans actually oh. found facts. Fans actually found a blog that she used to use before she joined AKB, and she used to have a girlfriend. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> That's really interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I... All right, so moving on. Hmm. Uh, let's see. What what part did they go into next? Uh, they went into a, at least from what I can tell from my notes, that it was... Showing a handshake event. Oh, that's right. And how she was standing for 10 hours straight. Yeah. That's how much dedication Nachan is and how much she appreciates her fans. Because she said it herself. She's like, I'm putting myself on their level because they stood there the whole entire time. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do it myself. That's, that is too sweet. Because she is really grateful for the fans in that aspect, the where she puts herself on their level. And that's just amazing. Because you can see how all the other girls, they look like they're standing up, but they're actually, like, sitting down in a chair. Mm -hmm. Like, based on, like, um the chair angle. Like, if they become, mm -hmm. like, how the angle of the chair is, I mean, they're somewhat sitting down, but they're not standing up like Nachan was completely. Yeah. Hmm. And that part was just, just all inspiring to me, to mm -hmm. be honest. Just showing how much she does really care for her fans. And then, after that, this is where the very, um, the documentary takes a big turn. And it mm -hmm. starts getting really depressing and sad, for the most part, mm -hmm. I would say. If, if you would have to agree, because this is when we learn that Nachan has a, an eating disorder, mm. where she came. I don't. I don't remember what the disorder was called, because I didn't take notes on what the actually disorder was called. But I just remember she was diagnosed with some sort of eating disorder. Hold on, I'll I'll see if I can find it. But yeah. Like, I knew about that already because it was in her speech for the Sosenkyo last year? Mm, was I it last it was year? The year no. before. Right, 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 right. 2016, right? Mm, yeah. It was mm. the year. See, because I. Because, you know, when I watched the uh, Sosenkyo, I didn't. I didn't know the translation of the speeches, as I just hear it as it is in Japanese, so I have no idea really what the girls are talking about. All I knew was that, that her speech was just really emotional and one of the best speeches of uh, the night. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. know what it was about at all, because at that point, well, and still now, like, i not really fluent enough to know what the members mm -hmm. are speaking about. Yeah, but we did come to find out that uh, Nachan ended up being diagnosed with an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it was sad because um, she ended up thinking of 
was thinking of maybe even graduating from the group mm -hmm. at that time. But she ended up going on a hiatus. Uh, I believe it was a one-month hiatus because she took the month before Sosankyo, the Sosankyo election. Yeah. And just how... Uh, I don't have that much many notes now. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Only have like two more notes. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I already said the one. <laughs> so I just have like one more note to talk about. While you're looking uh looking at that or looking up the term, um I wanna say, um, like I said in my um forty eight forty six day challenge of when I was um talking about the members that relate to me the most. Like I said in that video, um, it was this documentary that made me fully realize how close Nachan is to me in sort of a way. Like I said, like if I was going to talk in that video, it was going to start to get really depressing, so I don't really want to make this video also really depressing either. Mm -hmm. But like some of the issues that she brought up with herself, I can definitely very much are very well connected to myself i would have to say like i brought up in that other video like how she compares others to herself and kind of like downgrades herself way below other people because i'm not gonna lie i do that to myself all the time and then i know it's a bad thing to do but it's just something that has been with me for like the longest time Mm. Okay, I mm. found it. I found the eating disorder. Uh, it was called functional hypoglycemia. Mm. What it is, uh, what I'm reading, it's an abnormally low level of blood sugar, glucose. Mm. So that was what was making her eat so much because her body was needing more glucose, blood sugar. And from what I remember from the documentary, it said that it's really hard to treat. Mm -hmm. From what I remember from the documentary, like it's very yeah. And there were remember. some, there were some other symptoms listed on there, like aside from the eating disorder, but also. And but another thing that that's a big problem with this with Nana is that. Mm. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Like you know, she she was aware of how much she was eating and she mm. she didn't want to be fat because you know, she's an idol, she wanted to keep a figure, so mm. So like she talked about how she after was forcing herself to throw up. Mhm. Mm yeah, that's, that's really, really, really sad to hear, mm -hmm. and how she just kept on downgrading herself, calling herself ugly, and that she's too fat. I, I, mm -hmm. I hated seeing that. Like, I didn't know that just how much that was affecting her. Yeah, as to see how Nachan has been one of my favorite top favorite members within the past three four years now has it been mm -hmm. i had no idea even about this at all mm -hmm. me neither and just and it i feel like it's not like nachan just doesn't have this problem either but as we know with harupi of how she's taken a hiatus and just like other members like nishino miki and how they think that they're fat, but they're not even fat. It's just considered like idle terms fat, even though it's not necessarily fat at all. Even though it's considered normal weight mm -hmm. of what we would consider. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is really sad to see that she thinks of herself as being fat and ugly. 
even though in actuality she's actually a very beautiful girl. She really is. And how, um, I believe, and the only member that she was able to even tell any, tell this, uh, stuff to was, uh, mm -hmm. her best friend, slash wife, yeah, like, slash girl. She, she kept Maybe. it, she kept it secret about her eating disorder, about her condition. She kept it secret from both members and fans for a long time. Like, outside of her family, Yuri really was the only one she could open up to about this. Mm. And, like, mm. even even now, even later after, you know, she did, she revealed in her Sosankyo speech that she was going through that. Even then, she still, the, the one member she went to was always Yuri. Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> uh, mm. What else is there too? Um, and I would part say, the part that oh, made me, mm. the part that brought me to tears, like actually made me cry was when when we did see one of the texts that she sent to Yuri. Mm. Appella, she was just saying how she she just hated the way. The way that she looked, and I just thought that's awful that she's thinking that about herself. Mm. Yeah. And the weird thing is, in this documentary, it, like, the mother roles, I would have to say, are, like, completely the opposite, in a way, with Komi and Nachan's mother. Because, as we knew from um, the Komi documentary, um, her mother was telling her to do what she believes is right and that she would support her in her decision either way but in this time with Nachan's mother she actually like really tried to help her sort of stay in the AKB in a way because mm -hmm. her mother knew like a because we knew that during her hiatus that we found out in this documentary that every single day it was excruciating to watch her daughter Nachan not being in the group because she saw how ter how bad it affected her without her being in AKB. Mm -hmm. So her mother was trying, more or less, trying to like help her stay within the group. I would have to say, compared yeah. to Comey's mom, that was like more or less. It's your the decision. the way she said it. The way she said it is, she said that if. She felt that if Nana left the group, she would just become empty. Mm. Like, yeah. she wouldn't do anything. There wouldn't be anything for her to keep her mind on. And it's just really sad to see. And I do believe, like, even with, like, the other members that do go on, on hiatus, I'm not going to say it's probably the same for them, but... I would probably imagine it would sort of be like Nachan of how like their hiatuses sort of like make them miss the group even more. It it does. They're not able to be with the friends and other people that they made that they care about and not really enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. More or less I'd have to say. Um then do you remember what happens next? <laughs> I think... Actually, uh, we it, had footage of the... Uh, I forget what the name of the concert was, but it was the special concert where the Senbatsu members got to perform. It was kind of like a thank you event. But like, thank you for supporting and voting for us to get to Senbatsu. Mm -hmm. it, it was... It was where Nana, for the first time, she performed Kangai Hito solo. Ah, uh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Isn't... What, what, isn't that the Sosankyo, like, kind of like... It's not the Sosankyo concert, but like the appreciation concert? Yeah, that that's what, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Hmm. But... Like, there was a moment where she was, like, really struggling and she had to go to the bathroom by herself because she was crying. 
was that the time where she also, like, beforehand, how she was sick, but she was yeah. keeping it to herself, or did she not keep it to herself? She, I don't like, remember. she did come down with, like, a bit of a cold, but, like, she was saying how her fever came down, so... Like, did she keep that to herself, or did she actually tell the other members about it? Because I remember... I think she kept it to herself. Because it was something about if she told them, they would be more worried or something along the lines of that. Mm-hmm. She, she didn't want to make other members worry. But it was just... Because she even was going 120% then, like she always did in... Um, Yokoyama Yui and the other senpai were really worried that she wouldn't be able to do her best during the actual performance because she was going all out during the practice. <laughs> but as we know, Nachan's beliefs are, I'm going to go 120% no matter what <laughs> the circumstances, either practice and or performance. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh... I, I'm I'm trying to remember things, but since I'm sorry, since you watched like the documentary a little bit more than mm -hmm. me because you rewatched it, I'm sure you probably would remember a lot more. Um, because mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of the timeline here. Okay, then we get actually no, I remember now, and then we get a cut to um. Actually, I'm not sure if this was before the, that scene or after, but we get a cut to um, the the John Ken tournament at the Budokan, where. Mm. The oh yeah, that was that was earlier in okay. it. Yeah. Sorry, it's just gonna. We get a scene where they're at the John Ken, uh, Budokan, and the Senbatsu is being announced. And we see how like all of her gen mates and even um some of the 15th gen members because she's a 14th gen member are being selected to be in the senbatsu for what song was it uh, kiboteki oh for kiboteki and she wasn't called into the senbatsu and we saw mm -hmm. her breaking down so yes. hard and it was just so hard to see because, as we know, Nachan is probably, like, one of the hardest working 48 group members. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say, well, maybe ever. Because, obviously, y Yuri is uh, another one, but Yuri gets kind of, like, pushed under the rug because she's more, more or less in the back. Um, but, yeah, Nachan is, like, one of the hardest working 48 members in the sea that she isn't making Simbatsu with all her work. It was just really sad to see. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of this was, like, really... It was really sad, and it did make it kind of hard to watch because we, we don't want to see Nana sad. Mm -hmm. We we don't want to see her struggling like this. We want to... We, we want to see our idols shining smiling we want to see them happy and we know that it's not like that all the time but it's just it's hard for us to see them when they're when they're struggling with stuff like this mm. and then i'm not sure if it then goes to the actual sosenkyo where it was mm -hmm. just on that because i'm trying to remember and this is why Yes, because we, we get the footage of the Sosenkyo, and we That's see okay. her full speech that was broadcasted, yeah, she where was she... really hoping that... She was really praying that she would make Senbatsu, because she had an amazing speech that she prepared, and if she didn't make Senbatsu, then there was no then way... Then she, she wouldn't be able to say it. To make because, the like, speech. Because, like, when, you're, when you don't make it into the Senbatsu, there's, like, a time limit that you have to say everything super fast. But she she wanted to have this. She wanted to take her time. She prepared this so that she could open up to her fans and express what she was going through. If, if she didn't make Sambatsu, then she couldn't do that. And I'll just give a little side note. I was tearing up a bit when seeing Comey. Like, I, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> but seeing Komi get announced <laughs> 21, it made me happy and sad at the same time again. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I had to put that in Okay, there. but it kind of, the documentary ends with uh, Nana actually seeing a message from her older brother who is working as a doctor mm. at school, first off. But his message to Nana was incredibly sweet. I mean, it kind of... Yeah, it is sweet because... Wasn't the reason why he went into being a doctor because of Nachan, in a sense? Because mm -hmm. of her condition that she went through? So he wanted to go help in any way that he could? Or am I just thinking... Or am I just wrong? I'm not that? entirely sure about that, but I do know that since he is in that work, he is doing, you know, he was always giving Nana advice on, like, what to do, of, like, helping her with her condition. Mm -hmm. Like, she would send him, like, a list of things she would eat, and he would count up the calories that it added up to. Mm -hmm. But, like, that segment itself was so heartfelt to hear... Mm -hmm. Her actual brother's words because we didn't really hear anything like from her brother we just like heard of things about her brother mm -hmm. but then actually and then and then we get the message it was really and he's basically the best brother ever mm -hmm. he'll do literally anything for his mm -hmm. little sister mm -hmm. and he was even saying how uh, Nachan herself helped him go through his tough times, even though she might not have known about the things that he was going through necessarily, mm -hmm. maybe to say. Mm -hmm. But the fact how they were both helping each other out through their problems was just really 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 heartfelt yeah because i i actually wasn't really expecting to see her brother like i thought they were just going to show mm -mm. nachan's reactions like i actually wasn't expecting that they were going to show the video itself. <laughs> me neither so that was fairly interesting to see what he actually looks like now because they in the, the in the documentary they would just show like pictures of him as when he was like a little kid with nachan and rena I'm not sure about the other brother, but... <laughs> hmm. Alright, so... Uh, uh, lastly, what are your overall thoughts about this? Overall thoughts definitely is a must-watch for yeah. any AKB fan, not John fans. Mm -hmm. um, I think regardless um, of whether you're a Okada Nanaoshi, or if you're an AKB fan, even if you're not a AKB fan per se, but if you like J-pop idols, this this documentary, it really shows a lot of, what would you call it, her resolve? Mm, I guess her, what the trials of could be of being an idol, more or less. But mm -hmm. with her resolve as well, is how she faces faces her problems. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, although this is sort of like on the more depressing side, mm -hmm. the things I would still definitely recommend watching it. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of people who even though they're not going through that specifically exact situation, there are some people who may have felt inferior to certain people or they compare themselves to certain people, like this mm. image that they want to be and they compare themselves to that. Yeah, like myself, like I was mm. saying earlier, of how you can... Because obviously, you know, we see these idols as like angels like up there just trying to make us happy but then this documentary mm -hmm. brings us to a level to where we could actually like relate in a way to show us that mm -hmm. 
it although they are the really documentaries like, they basically they show their human side like they show that they're still human they they have these personal struggles and the same thing that like any other person like me or somebody else is going through mm -hmm. especially with like an inferiority i would guess complex <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah mm. overall mm -hmm. great documentary although it is depressing absolutely sad. great mm -hmm. and then you Ruka? <laughs> or have you said everything no i mean yeah i mean i totally mm -hmm. agree with everything you just said i this documentary made me love nana even more than i already did like there was so much that i loved about her but this just like brought it up to another level mm -hmm. yeah and then i really mm -hmm. forgot how and the the documentary ended off because i know there there's probably like a little bit af like maybe like a minute or two after the video clip with her brother I don't know. But, I think it ended with that. With it probably did. Um, there's not really much left for me to say personally. And then you also mm -hmm. had some news you wanted to announce, Ruka. Well, yes. Uh, uh, there was some recent announcement that came out today. They announced the show dates for Gekidan Renachi's Kato Rena's theater troupe she made up of AKB members. They have announced the show dates for Romeo and Juliet. And this is this makes me really excited. This was announced uh, earlier this morning on Katorena's showroom. She announced the dates and she also revealed the official posters, which mm -hmm. look amazing. But anyways, the official dates, I have them up here, actually. Um, for the white team, which has uh, Koji Yui and Okada Nana leads, um, for the white group, it will be May the 9th, May the 11th, and May the 13th. Two performances on May the 13th. Mm. And then for the black team, which is the Fujita Nana and Fukuoka Seina group, they have a performance on May the 10th, May the 11th. So the white group will have one uh, earlier in the afternoon, and then the black group will have one later in the evening. And then two performances on May the 12th. Hmm. And they've already started. Uh, I think they're about to start selling tickets like sometime in April, which April is pretty soon, so mm. that should be coming up pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, I am very excited to uh, see what this play is going to be like. I mean, obviously I have to wait for actual footage of it to come out because I can't go to Japan on such short notice when I still got school. Mm. But I am still very excited to see this play. Mm. I'm what, sure. what are your thoughts on it? I mean, I don't think I'm going to see it personally. Cause well, like, I mean, I, not, I know. I mean, I mean that because I'm not really in the stage plays as much, per se. I mean, just like in general, I don't think I'm going to really see it. I'm, but, I'm a theater nerd, so of course I'm going to be into this. The only stage play that I was attempting to watch was the uh the Mutsuko Gakuen one with Gekikara story. <laughs> but then then like halfway through the video the audio got screwed up. So I yeah. couldn't watch that and that was the only attempt of me watching a stage play. <laughs> so wait, wait, I, what about Infinity? I showed you oh. Infinity. Right. <laughs> I, forgot <laughs> about that. I forgot about that. I'm sorry. Other than those, like, I haven't really watched any stage plays, so I can't really, I don't think I'm going to really watch it as much, but I personally would have liked Notch on the B, Romeo, more than Julia, <laughs> as a lot of people would, but I think that's it, why. A lot of people, a lot of people suspected that Notch was going to be 
Romeo. Even Nana herself thought that she was going to be Romeo. I think that's look, why look, here's, look, here's the thing, though. Like, yeah, you, you just mm -hmm. brought it up, Renati. I think she knew about this. She knew that everyone was expecting for Nana to be a uh, Romeo, so she was like, well, that's that sounds really good, and I agree with you, but what if she was Juliet? And I think that's why she did it. And plus, yeah. I was re-watching the uh, audition footage, actually, mm -hmm. and um, do, do you remember Gina's audition? When they did the uh, the balcony scene during auditions? No, the ones I remember watching were uh, Asai Nanami's, not Chan's, uh, Yokoyama Yui's, <laughs> I think Mako's, I believe I watched. Okay, I'm definitely showing you because I think Gina is going to be a very good Romeo. Mm. Really? But yeah! Yeah. I think I think with that we can end this off. Mm, yeah, I'll just say a, a few more things. Um, mm. I still have my 48 day challenge, 48, 46 day challenge that I'm doing today. Right. So look forward to that video. It's probably going to be on the longer side as it's literally my whole entire 48, 46 group collection that I have. And I'm going to have to be taking things literally like off the shelves constantly and then putting them back. <laughs> And just moving like everything around me just for you to show like everything that I have. And I don't know how I'm gonna do the photo cards wise because <laughs> because I have so many photo cards where I'm not gonna be able to like show them all, but just I'll show you like a general like idea of how many photo cards I have. Yeah. Uh, I'm also gonna be showing my which I'm gonna plug this into because I did a video yesterday of me unboxing uh, 22-7 merchandise, or what their mm -hmm. Japanese name would go as Nanabuno Niji Ni. Uh, they are um, Seiyu Idols, or what they're supposed to be Seiyu Idols. I'll link, <laughs> I'll link that video uh, in the, the ending screen also mm -hmm. of my unboxing of that. And yeah, I got some thick merchandise from them. I, I really... Like it, like the fo their photo cards. I wasn't really expecting of how they like did their photo cards in a way, because as mm -hmm. you know how like the forty eight group shops they have it like of uh, sets of fives for members. Mm -hmm. But for um their uh five packs, they have literally just five random photo cards of any member. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, I was expecting like what AKB does. So I was really surprised to see when I was opening up my first photo pack. As if you guys watch that video, no, I'm how surprised I was seeing how like, oh, these are, this isn't just one member for pack. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I would recommend you guys watching that video as well. I will link that. Um, look forward to the 48 day challenge, which is probably going to be a long video today. <laughs> so sorry about that. That is probably going to be long. Other than that, um, I'm not sure. Uh, me and Ruka should be deciding soon for uh, the next community poll because it's been like forever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been forever since we did uh, the first one. Yeah, that's right. Uh, mm. We'll have to think of that. Mm. I, uh, I would have to say it's more or less my fault <laughs> <laughs> than Ruka's. Uh, so whenever we get decide um, a question for that, we'll spread it out to the community for them to vote and hopefully we, we won't get any troll votes <laughs> hopefully <laughs> like, like uh the last you guys time. behave yourselves uh what else is there i'm not sure of any other videos that we're gonna be coming out with hmm. other than because ruka are are you also going to be doing the 48 46 group challenge but like after uh you're done with the semester or maybe or no? So Ruka might do up the for 48, 46 day challenge after mine. Yeah. As mine is going to the end of or mid slash end of April. Let's say. But other than that, oh, that's about that's about all. 
I have to say. This is a long video. 45 minutes long. Yeah. This is good length. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, until that video, guys, um, I guess we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye!